Why is this project important at this point in time? Particularly, we are in a very special moment in time, so to say, in the development of institutionalized global governance. We are now in a state where, compared to the to, to, to previous periods, like before the end of the Cold War, just after the Second World War, where global governance is, first of all, much denser in terms of institutional uh, institutional forms. Many more institutions exist uh, than they existed 50, 60, 70 years ago. So we have much denser institutional spaces which are responsible for governing global problems that societies are care about. So the, the density makes it more uh, makes it uh, challenging to disentangle different institutions, what they are what they are doing and how inter actors interact with them. The methods of inquiry that we are using in this project are twofold or if you want threefold. We use a multi-method research design where we start from a mapping of the institutional complexes that govern global health, the internet and climate change and we create a large end data set that allows us to, to, to map over time and trace over time which institutions are part of these institutional complexes. We look at different institutional types and we collect information on these institutions in order to see how the landscape of institutional forms in these three areas evolved. We will, in addition to this descriptive mapping, we will conduct statistical analysis in order to see what are the features of institutions and institutional interactions that we can observe and what are factors that explain variations in these institutional interactions and also, importantly, how different types of actors engage with different types of institutions. That's the second method of inquiry, statistical analysis. And the third method of inquiry, complementary to the descriptive and inferential statistical analysis, is a case study for each of these three sectors where we try to, in a more depth, more close range kind of analysis, to understand what are the motivational factors for different types of actors to engage in governance in these three areas, what are the strategies and techniques that actors use in order to navigate the complicated institutional landscapes in these three governance spaces and what makes them choose between strategies in, uh, um, according to their needs, goals and other kind of features. And without better understanding this density and complexity, we have we are not likely to have a full, a good enough picture of how these important uh, processes work and how we can improve them if we want to, for example, enhance the performance of international institutions, make them more legitimate, more accountable, more transparent, more open to the voices of otherwise underprivileged actors.